please welcome with me Simon Richter, who will tell us, hopefully not as loud as I'm speaking now, a little bit about an alternative approach for package management and auto building tools and how to reinvent the wheel. Hi, good morning. Well, uh, as you've probably guessed from the title, I'm uh, reinventing the wheel. And the, uh, the basic idea, uh, the basic question uh, we should st uh, pro probably start out with is why? Um, re uh, wheel reinventions uh, are pretty common to the history of mankind, and uh, sometimes has been a reason for that, sometimes not. Um, so, uh, basically, um, I, um, I, I wanted to, um, uh, for, uh, to about two, two years ago, I wanted to start work on an, a new alternative auto builder for Debian. And uh, during that, uh, that uh, this was or originally supposed to be uh, based on apt. Uh, and during development, I found several shortcomings in apt which made me consider writing an alternative. And about half a year ago, I tried to write, uh, implement a uh, small tool to uh, generate uh, CD images directly from a uh, Debian mirror um, that, unlike Jigdo, uh, doesn't need any template files. It will just pick up the current files and from the packages file and uh, be done with it, uh, basically. And again, I, fa I failed because uh, some missing interfaces in apt and some shortcomings in its design. The, uh, app, uh, the big problem with apt, I see, is that apt is a tool. It is not a framework. Uh, it's designed for one speci a specific task, and it's very good at that task. But it's uh, very difficult to extend beyond that task. Um, for example, the, the, um, one, one of the big problems I saw while writing the uh, CD image generator was that apt is totally unable to um, handle multiple databases uh, and multiple architectures at once, which would be uh, a nice feature to have if building a, a CD that holds both, uh, uh, both Intel and PowerPC packages, for example. And also, it makes the assumption that only one si uh, single system is uh, installed uh, with it, and that is th uh, that this system is the uh, currently uh, the, uh, the system it's currently running on. So it's very difficult to um, uh, install packages to uh, to another uh, system after uh, or to switch system root after apt has been initialized. You can only initialize up once, so um, you basically have to start a, a new process and reinitialize uh, re re every time you, you need to swap to an, uh, another chain route, another architecture, anything. Okay, so um, the basic. Uh, uh, so what I started out with uh, was some basic requirements. What I'd like to see in a package management tool, it should be, of course, extensible. It should uh, possibly be, uh, you should be able to strip it down to the uh, bare minimum for use in uh, uh, space tight environments or, uh, uh, in uh, or embedded systems, or maybe, uh, yeah, maybe the boot floppies uh, or Debian installer. You should be, um, it should be able to handle a different kind of package, uh, package types, like Debian packages, RPM packages, LSB packages. It should ha uh, handle all of that at the same time in a single process. And it should also uh, be possible to, uh, to declare a dependency between different types of packages. Uh, this is going to be interesting with the LSB transition, um, where an LSB package might be installed. It, sh it should be installable to the new normal package manager. And, it, uh, and that LSB package has some dependencies on Debian packages. And uh, so basically, if you install Oracle from an uh, LSB package, it should pu uh, pull in LSB base. That, uh, that, uh, that is the goal. Um, 
Well, um, the, the approach I'm uh, 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 also, uh, also there were some minor uh, ob uh, minor uh, objectives like being able to um, d uh, download a half of an upgrade, uh, do that part, uh, upgrade that part, clean out the cache directory, uh, d uh, download the next part, for again for spice, uh, space tight environments. Um, po uh, be uh, uh, do all uh, all changes on the file system in the form of transactions that y you can uh, y you can always or back in uh, in case there's an error and yeah th those were the minor objectives so the ba um, basic question is how, uh, how to achieve that I've talked it over with s some people in uh, in the IT department of my uni and. Uh, the basic approach we uh, chose uh, choose to take was that of a relational database, uh, stripped down uh, accordingly. Um, the main idea is you have a, so a set of packages and relationships between those packages. A package can be anything. It can, uh, it can be a RPM package, can be a Debian package, and it can be a Debian source package. Um, there is no fundamental difference between the source package and the binary package, actually. Uh, the, source pack, uh, the only differences are in the detail, like a source package can be installed to a particular directory, whereas a binary package has a fixed location, and a, um, a source package can uh, generate other packages, while a Debian binary package cannot. Um, but there's no... Um, uh, reason for me to to make the, uh, that a requirement that only uh, s some special kind of source packages can ge generate other packages, which is go uh, I'm going to talk about later. Okay, so um, the relationships between packages are uh, should, uh, are then expressed inside that relationship uh, relational database as well relations, and. Uh, the, basi um, the basic idea is to expand those relations only when they are needed. So you can leave out uh, handling for like recommends or suggests from a uh, from an embedded system, <coughs> or you can um, uh, leave out all the build dependency handling uh, f uh, from a system that will never ever uh, uh, build a package. And well, you can leave out RPM support from a Debian-only uh, system, so on. The um, so um, I'm going to summarize uh, this for a second uh, and make a, b a bit of examples. Um, Uh, I think oh, then you can't see that at, um, beh uh, behind there. Any? Okay, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Okay. Um, speci uh, well, specific challenges. Uh, uh, one example of, uh, of a specific a challenge a package management system has to face nowadays is um, an upgrade from A version um, is an upgrade when you have um, a version uh, uh, strictly version de dependencies, which happens pretty often, as, uh, especially in packages like OpenOffice. And you want to do an upgrade from here. Uh, uh, you want basically you want to up, uh, upgrade both pa uh, package B from version one to two, and package A from version one to two. Um, the only way to keep a system like this consistent would be to remove or at least deconfigure th uh, this package. Then you can upgrade here, and then you can install this package. Uh, um, um, this is one of the big challenges uh, in uh, writing package management uh, software, as all of this will ha need to happen inside a uh, transaction. 
So you can roll back if you, uh, anything goes wrong, like, uh, this, uh, like the system disk uh, goes full, which is basically unhandled at the moment. Um, so uh, so uh, uh, a big challenge was uh, trying to, uh, to get, uh, get a mo model that will, uh, well, model this case onto, uh, onto something sensible. Um, well, uh, the, uh, I'm afraid I can't present any code at the moment. I have spent the last days implementing a lot of st uh, stuff for this. And basically, I've uh, re-implemented re QuinDiff in about 20 lines of C++ code. Um, if you uh, leave out the parses that are part of a library now, <laughs> then the, the remainder is, pre uh, is pretty small. Um, the, the big problem I was facing was that the packages file is not uh, totally, uh, in its entire, uh, entirety UTF-8 encoded. And so, uh, so I need to, uh, so, so there need to be a, a lot of really awful hacks to actually um, to pass it into uh, into C in C++ because uh, C++ I/O streams cannot change encoding on the way. Well, that's an implementation detail basically. Um, yes, the, the uh, um, so. so uh, well, uh, I'm a bit unsure now whether I should tell more about the concepts or whether I should talk about auto building at, uh, at this point. Hmm. No opinions, great. <laughs> um, okay, I'll, I'll tell you a bit ab about my requirements in auto building and then I'll go back to the concepts of uh, everything and trying to explain how, uh, how to integrate all of this. Okay. Uh, for auto building, I have also set up a s uh, set of requirements uh, uh, that m uh, most uh, I mostly th think would be nice to have s uh, uh, currently, but are currently di very difficult to implement um, because of th uh, because of the structure uh, the, the auto builders use for representing the state and. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so um, I've, uh, I've thought about two basic is uh, issues I've seen in the, la uh, in the last years. Um, the smaller one of the, uh, those are uh, ABI transitions where the zone name changes. Uh, so you, uh, so uh, the need for, uh, for uh, rebuilding a set of applications against the newer library where just the ABI changed, the API did not, and well, everyone needs to upload new version. Uh, uh, well, everyone who depends on the library that changes its own name needs to upload a new version in order to uh, uh, to uh, 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 kick the auto builders into compiling the new version. But unless you specify an explicit uh, version de build dependency, you will uh, you cannot be, uh, uh, even be sure that uh, this. Re-uploading uh, this re-upload of the same source will actually build against the new libraries. Yeah, um, so new libraries have to settle a bit into the auto builders, or or you would have to uh, to upload a new version again uh, in order uh, in order to have to have it auto build. And basically, there's no real need for that, as I think the auto builders could automatically figure out that a package will be going away. And um, uh, well, that's uh, it's pretty easy to see since uh, if a library package with an old zone name goes away, uh, it will claim to be built from a specific source, and that uh, specific source has advanced to a new version, and uh, whereas the library package d uh, did not uh, advance with it, and. Uh, uh, so, so it's pretty easy to see that this package is probably not go, uh, not go, uh, not anymore going to be built from source, and should be removed. So uh, as an uh, so the auto builders can see, any package that, that is uh, is depending on this library should probably be rebuilt uh, be rebuilt uh, now, and uh, as you 
and at the point where the auto builder can actually see the, the library package uh, being outdated, it, uh, it can also see the current version. So, uh, so you can be sure that um, the new version of the library has been picked up at this point. And the actual bigger problem I, uh, I've, we've seen twice in the last years, which, uh, which should also be handled by the auto builders, is um, big ABI transitions like the C++ ABI transition. Um, the idea I'd, uh, I'd like to propose is to uh, implement um, an ABI tag on the on binary packages. Uh, the control file would list uh, which tags should be present in the final binary, binary package. Then, uh, uh, during uh, um, then during the setting up uh, uh, um, during pack uh, packing the, uh, during Gener uh, generating the final control file, um, you would uh, it, uh, the package uh, gen control would look up the respective settings that are in, uh, currently in use for that uh, for the host system, and write uh, write them down in the, into the package file uh, in the into the control file, and well, uh, the rule of thumb would be no package can declare dependency on another package that um, differs in an ABI tag that is present in both. So, um, if we, uh, so, so if uh, basically, uh, so if we upgrade, say, libqt for, from uh, a, uh, C++ ABI 1 to C++ ABI 2, like it will happen soonish or has happened, I didn't follow that actually. Um, then any package depending on um, uh, libqt and <coughs> specifying an ABI version of one uh, will uh, have its dependency broken. And then the, the mechanism that um, picks up uh, so name changes will kick in. So you see, oh, this package is uninstallable. Its build dependencies are, uh, are still installable. Let's try. And well, it will then at this point rebuild the package. If it if it works, just uh, it's fine to upload. Um, minor note: at this point, uh, auto builders would need to generate new versions uh, uh, all by themselves, which would need to be addressed as well. Okay. Um, those are the basic requirements for, uh, for the entire project. To I've already explained also why. Um, um, well, and I've thought, uh, uh, told you a bit about the concepts. Um, I think I'm uh, going to continue with, with uh, the actual execution layer that actually d uh, does things rather than just uh, think about um, what to do now, how to, uh, how to install a package. And uh, the idea of uh, the basic uh, problem um, one is facing here is that the uh, package graph, or the package dependency graph, is uh, not a tree. And it's, um, uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's not even uh, acyclic. So, uh, you, uh, you have lots of cycles in the dependency t uh, graph which need to be broken in order to, uh, to do anything. And um, a basic, uh, basically the, the idea is to compile uh, the, uh, the relevant portions of the dependency graph into, uh, into an execution tree that can, uh, can be, uh, uh, or that, uh, that can be uh, executed one node at a time and uh, well, when you're done, you're done. Uh, the basic idea for, uh, I have for the tree is to have, well, um, uh, each uh, to have each node have uh, export three different functions. Uh, one of them is uh, execute, which is pretty easy uh, to understand, and uh, one of them is split. Split says. Um, this action ne uh, ne uh, might need to be 
uh, split up into sub-actions in order to break some loop that is in the, uh, in the de uh, dependency graph. And uh, additionally, I'm going to add three uh, meta actions, uh, which are parallel, which some of the GCC hackers might uh, might uh, uh, guess what it means. Um, and and or and means um, do the fir uh, do the uh, first thing on the uh, on the list, then the second thing, and so on. And if something fails, uh, tell every, uh, everything, uh, tell all the nodes that uh, you've already executed. Uh, or means um, do the first thing. If that fails, do the second thing. And parallel ma means um, these things are in no particular order and can be executed at any time uh, while you are in the node. Um, th this, is, this is going to be important when, uh, when, we st uh, start, uh, uh, when you uh, need to install packages right in the middle of a download or parallel to downloading other packages. Um, downloads themselves are actions like installing and um, upgrading and, uh, and so on. And basi basically, um, you, you st uh, basically a typical action to, uh, would be to, well, a, a simple typical action, upgrade package A. Um, um, uh, you would start out with, with a single node, upgrade package A, and you, if you, uh, you can either call execute on that, which would basically, uh, would, which would most likely split, uh, split the node and they call execute recursively, or um, you could try to split, at which point you get download A, Um, and install A. And this, this, is, this is basically an AND condition because you need to download it, then you can install. And well, the next point is to, uh, to split up the download into um, what, uh, into acquire this package uh, verify the, the MD5 sum or the SHA1 uh, sum and uh, so on. So basically this is acquire. Um, this is verify. And again acquire can be split up into um, Acquire a difference, a diff file, or acquire package. So, um, af uh, so af after you've been through this tree, uh, um, uh, to this part of the tree, you will have either a, diff a difference file or a package file. Um, this part would then verify that uh, the file you've actually got uh, matches the, the sum ma uh, marked in the packages file, then the download is complete, and then you can go on installing. You don't need to unpack the entire tree at once. You can do that uh, as you visit each node. Um, but there's nothing forcing, uh, but in case you have uh, uh, your, uh, your action is going to concern multiple packages. Um, there's nothing that stops you from downloading uh, while you're installing uh, uh, other packages as th uh, those are basically parallel, uh, running in parallel. This, this would be an example of the parallel um, pseudo action. Um, well, th this, is, this is basically uh, the concepts. Are there any questions t up to this point?
Is anyone awake still? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen one hand now. OK. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, n next thing I, I think I'm going to tell you is about the current state of the implementation. As th uh, the best concepts are, well, if they are the best, I don't know, but um, the best concepts are worth nothing but on, uh, without actually implementing them. Uh, currently, what is working is the package list parser. Well, it's almost working, actually, uh, because of the uh, issue with encoding, which is a call to all Debian developers in some strange sandy countries um, to actually use UTF-8 for their names. And well, um, the, uh, you can pass a package list. You, you get two C++ uh, iterators for, uh, for the package list. So you can use all the STL algorithms like sort and copy uh, on, uh, on package lists. And well, there's a small container that, uh, that can contain packages. And work is on the way on the scheduler en engine at the moment, which I can uh, t uh, test independently. So that's the current state of the implementation. I hope to have something work uh, working very soon. <laughs> at is this a question? Yep. Um, um, yeah. One of the things apt doesn't do, which would be really cute if you were um, playing around writing something to replace it or whatever, um, is um, there's no particular reason why you should um download all the packages in one run and then unpack them all in the second run. Um, the sort of package model we used allows you to, as you go, just simply sort of, as you're downloading the next one, be unpacking the previous one, leave it in an unpacked state and then just simply configure them all when you're finished. This, we sort of played around with this with apt, and it kind of cut the install to the, up, or the upgrade time in about a third. Is that something you'd want to do with your sort of redesign of it? Sort of make it a lot more kind of, not, not so much, but yeah, a lot more parallel. There we go. That was the word yeah. I was looking for. This is basically what this is about. So uh, it allows to, uh, to say that these packages are unrelated, if they are inside a parallel node, they will be unrelated. Uh, if they are on the same level in the, p in the parallel node, uh, they are unrelated. So you can actually download one, install that one while the second one downloads. Yeah, um, but yeah, but you don't even need. You can install. Let's say you've got um, a dependency tree. There's no particular reason other than predepends and conflicts that you need to install that dependency tree in order in like reverse up. You can actually just unpack the whole lot onto disk, leave it all at unpacked state, and issue a, to tell the package just to configure the lot, um, and the package will work. Yeah. So there's no there's no particular reason to go through the process of trying to do too much kind of sort of, well, we won't, we'll download all of those 30 in one go and then install them. You could actually just download each one at a time, just leave unpacking it at the same time you're downloading the next set and stuff like this. If you say, well, yes, see where this I'm going. This is, this is also possible. I, I've not expanded the installed uh, part yet. Mm -hmm. It's uh, perfectly doable to, uh, to, the install part will split into unpack and uh, configure, and there's uh, no reason to uh, not delay the configure step. Right. Okay. Okay. Another question? So um, when I got myself out of bed this morning, I, I looked at your um, talk and it said workflow. Um, does this apply to the way that people interact with them? Um, this entire system, or are you actually referring with workflow to the topological sort of the tasks? Um, I'm afraid uh, to say that uh, I've written this so long ago, I don't really rem remember. 
So um, basically, uh, basically, I think I, I meant a workflow inside the system. Okay. So this graph that you've drawn there, this decision tree or whatever it is, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, is this your version? I mean, are you aware of workflow diagrams and, and the topological sorted task diagrams? Um, not really. I, uh, I've t uh, talked it over with some guys in our CS department, but uh, well, only to uh, only to the point where we had some something that might seem to work. Okay. So. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I just see I still have ten minutes to go, and well, I'm not overly sure what. Tell it uh, what to tell next. Um, hmm. This is going to be difficult. No, that would look ridiculous, uh, uh, even this early at in the morning. And well, um, hmm. what else could be to uh, told about this? Uh, the, well, uh, the, I could tell about the uh, current issues uh, that I'm facing, and well, this is ma a mainly a cry for help. I'm still working on the uh, on the part where you uh, go from the um, um, uh, uh, cycle full dependency tree to that action tree, which uh, should uh, is an actual tree. And uh, the uh, the algorithm for the, uh, for that is not uh, not entirely fixed yet. I think I have some uh, something that works, but it's uh, but I'm not uh, sure about some corner cases. And I'd like um, I'd like if uh, I'd really pr uh, appreciate it if someone spoke up and brought uh, brought me some corner case that is not handled at the moment. And. Uh, so, if, if if you think you f you found a problem, just tell me. I, I'm grateful for that. Okay. The, uh, the, uh, the basic idea is. Is this a question? So if you encounter a dependency cycle in, well, in 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 this graph, how does your algorithm decide where to start? Okay, sorry. So if you encounter a dependency cycle in, well, in 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 this graph. How does your algorithm actually decide where to start? I thought this was pretty much a manual process. Um, breaking an actual dependency cycle is, um, well, uh, uh, it should, uh, should be, uh, can only be done at random. Ba basically, in a dependency cycle cannot be broken without uh, breaking the assumptions the packages ma uh, will, will make. You, you have to get a guess which, which one you can break. So um, you, you can just print a warning, break any of them, and see, uh, see, if, it, uh, see if it works. This is al uh, also how, how dpackage handles it at the moment, uh, uh, as far as I know. Ah, and if it breaks, uh, with the help of your transactional system, you can just roll back and try the next one? Or? Um, yes, that's the plan. Oh. Good idea. <laughs> Thanks. So far, it hasn't been. Uh, so, so far, it hasn't broken. Uh, e e uh, uh, so uh, there's there's no real need. We can just print a warning, and uh, as uh, warnings will annoy people, uh, they will uh, at some point perhaps uh, degrade one of the dependencies into a recommit. There's actually no. Uh, uh, th there should be actually no uh, no particular reason for cyclic uh, cycl dependency. It was a long thread uh, about this on uh, Debian Devel, by the way, in case in case anyone uh, has missed such a big thread. Okay, uh, the, um, the basic idea behind this algorithm is um, I, um, I, um, I start out with this example because it's the problem case. Uh, where you, uh, you actually have to uh, have to think about what you're doing next, and uh, and you can uh, simply uh, go and install this, install this, install this. Oh, we're done. Like my, like my last search upgrade uh, went, which was fine, by the way. And so, uh, so the um, 
so um, um, so it, um, how uh, how do I how, how do you st uh, I start on this? Basically, I start with a list. I want to install a uh, a uh, B2 and A2 in no particular order. Um, I think th this uh, this uh, list can can be retrieved pretty easy from from the uh, from the dependency tree or dependency graph. I still uh, still use the word tree inappropriately here. And well, uh, as soon as I know, we want to install both uh, both of these packages, and they are both upgrades. Uh, then I know uh, I know I have two actions: upgrade B, upgrade A. Uh, this is an and whatever and thing, <laughs> which I. I've uh, I've practiced it. Uh, I've practiced drawing this character a lot. It still didn't. It doesn't work. Um, basically, uh, we try to install B, and we need to install A. Uh, the order here is uh, arbitrary at this moment, because uh, because this is something the, the dependency. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, b uh, because uh, this is something the, the, the dependency tree might actually tell us, but uh, but we we will get to later any uh, anyway, and the dependency tree might uh, might also spit out um, uh, incoherent uh, incoherent information at this point, which uh, basically happens with, with dependency cycles. So we know we need to upgrade the, uh, uh, both these packages. Then we can look, uh, take a look at the dependencies again. Uh, we, so we need to, uh, uh, since we still need to figure out the order. This is basically this is an and with a uh, uh, with unspecified order yet. Um, so um, we look at the dependency list of A. See that A depends on B, and we see that B does not depend on A. At this point, we can uh, we uh, we, uh, we can es establish the order, which would be B and A. And uh, in or in order to up uh, and the upgrade of B, would al uh, uh, the upgrade of B also has a dependency. It has a dependency of uh, uh, um, by the uh, by the Direct version de dependency of A1 to B1, B2 now conflicts with A1 implicitly, and so uh, so we see that uh, we we ne actually need to split uh, split up this upgrade into um, uh, into remove A, remove A, um, upgrade B. And install a, which which are basically subtasks of uh, of upgrade a. And well, th 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 this is uh, this is how the uh, the big problem case is handled. I'd be um, I've uh, so far I haven't found any other big problem cases that uh, that I uh, would need to handle in a special way. I'd be uh, glad, uh, glad uh, if I could get some in, uh, some more input on that. Like um, I'll tr uh, try constructing some uh, uh, some uh, strange cases, but uh, so far I haven't encountered any problems, and I don't think it it, it can be that uh, that I have uh, that this this would work so great. This cannot be simply. Okay. Um, good. And, uh, any questions un up to this point? Okay. Uh, well, there's n not much I still can say about this, so I guess this is going to be the end then. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>